Hey everybody, thank you so much for making it to our YouTube channel. I'm super glad that you are here. I hope that today's talk blesses you and it grows your relationship with Jesus. Before we get into the message though, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you can be notified every single time that we post. Love you and I'll see you soon at the end of this talk. Before we get into the whole entire content, I really wanna thank Pastor Andy Stanley, if you're watching this or if you ever watch this, thank you so much. Andy Stanley, Pastor Andy Stanley, Pastor Mark Driscoll, thank you so much. Um, a little bit of Mike Todd, I didn't want to really learn too much um, and to take the content, I just want to learn because his stuff is blowing up. So I want to give you something, pers a perspective that is a little bit more fresh, but thank you Pastor Michael Todd as well for all the content that you guys have been putting out. All these pastors are amazing. They've paved the way for someone like me to be able to teach something like this. And so why don't we honor these pastors tonight in this place, thank you. Point one, reasons for this series. What are the reasons for this series? Well, number one, you play like you practice. And I want you to practice well before you start playing. Maybe you're in a season of dating <clears throat> and you're a serial dater. And, 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 and maybe you're going from guy to guy or girl to girl and you're thinking, one day I'll settle down, but for now I'm just gonna date him and I'll use them and just lose them if things don't work out. And you're thinking that type of mindset that you're gonna go from guy to guy, girl to girl, and you date them for a year, maybe two years, and then things didn't work out, so you used them, and now you're gonna lose them. And what you don't understand is that the thing is that you are complicating your future relationships with your current relationships because you play like you practice. That's number one reason why. Number two reason is it's fun and games till they find out. Everything that you do now, every choice that you make, every choice that you take, this is a chapter of your story. And then one day someone's gonna wanna ask you about your story and you're not gonna wanna tell your story. And the reason why you're not gonna wanna tell your story is because your story might be or could be or will be embarrassing. Or a churchy word that you're possibly used to hearing, it's shame. There will be shame in your heart. There will be shame in your mind and you're gonna do whatever it takes and you're gonna be so tempted to lie to the one that you should be the most truthful to, yeah. aside from Jesus. Because the most important decision, aside from choosing Jesus, is choosing who you're gonna marry. But if you have things that are shameful for you, it's gonna convert you into a liar. You have no idea how many women sometimes marry men because they only heard part of the story. And then 15 years later, they hear the full story and they come out as heartbroken. And they're heartbroken, and when they're heartbroken, guess what? The relationship could never be the same. So why are we having this series? Because you play like you practice, and it's only fun and games until they find out. Number three, and by the way, the decisions we make today play a part in the story we tell tomorrow. The decisions you make right now as a young person in your 20s, maybe early 30s, they make the story that you will tell tomorrow. Number three, your save file can be a regret. Do you know what a save file is? I didn't know until last night. A save file is a gaming term that they use to save your progress. It's your record in a way. Your record could become a regret. And I don't want you to allow yourself to be treated, oh sorry, when your name comes up, I don't want you to be treated like a regret. Because your name will come up and they won't say good things. Because when your name comes up, you know they're gonna say something about you because you say something about the people in your past and you decide what they'll say about you depending how you move, depending how you lead your relationships right now. And instead of being a regret, I want you to be a great memory. And the fourth reason is because I don't want, you shouldn't let players play. Do you like that one? It took me 10 hours to come up with these four things. <laughs> How do I get them all into the like gaming terms? So please appreciate my, my brain, it's tired. But And this one is mainly for the ladies. Uh, ladies, I don't want you to allow yourself to be treated like a commodity. And many times, the reason why you're treated like a commodity is because it's your decision. Yes, that's true. 
And I know that every story has its own complications. I know that every story has its own circumstances and not all stories are the same. And so it's very difficult to apply one single principle. I understand it 100%, but there's some room for growth sometimes. And you have to understand that some of the decisions that you are making is leading for men or people from the opposite sex to treat you like a commodity. A commodity is something that you buy, that you sell, or that you trade. And oftentimes, a commodity is something that you discard. And so for some of you, this is how you've been feeling. Traded and discarded. So I want you to feel like someone of great value and great worth. Not just based of what God says about you, because, you know, we sometimes read the Psalms and go, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. But then you go back home on Monday after Sunday and it's like, oh, shoot, I feel discarded. Right. So it's good for you to understand what God says about you. But I don't want you to be treated well or right based off only what God says, but based off what men treat you like. And this is why it's so important for you to hear these conversations Pay attention, lean in a little bit and say, okay, where is it that I could apply some of the things that I'm learning at church so that I could um, make better decisions when it comes to my relationships? Because the mistreatment you get accustomed to ultimately becomes how you define you. That was a bomb. How you allow people to treat you slowly becomes the definition of who you are in your own mind. Yeah, that's true. And that's why we have a lot of young ladies that feel like they're not valuable. Yeah. Feel like they're not worth it. So they have to do certain things that violate what they really desire, what they really want for their life in the future so they can get some type of current or present satisfaction. But it's cheap because whenever you're treated like a commodity, you'll be traded quickly. Yeah. Or you'll be discarded quickly. And this is what I don't want for you. And it's not only the ladies, but sometimes the men too. There are girls that really play the game hard. And it can really get inside a guy's head. And it can really crush the poor guy's head. And so you men as well, do not be treated like a commodity in different aspects of this conversation, amen? So this series is to help you think differently about yourself, but not just yourself, your future. I want you to think better about your future. There are two relationship myths, and these two myths dominate so much of our thinking behind how we do relationships. These two myths misinform so many of our relationship decisions in our culture. Everything in our culture feeds these two myths, and we base our decisions based on these two things, even though we know that they're silly. Here's the first one. The first myth is the right person myth. Now, is there a right person, yes or no? Yes. Say yes, say yes. So there's no perfect person. Is there a perfect person, yes or no? Is there a right person for you, yes or no? Yes. So the myth is not that if there is a right person or not. The myth is once you meet the right person, everything will be all right. So the myth doesn't have to do with if the right person exists. The truth is this, that you are compatible with so many people. And that's why when you get married, you got to understand that when you get married, you will bump into people that you are going to be physically attracted to. That is not your wife or your husband. You're going to bump into people that you are mentally compatible with. That is not your husband or your wife. You're going to be, you're going to, you're going to bump into people that you're possibly going to have chemistry with. That is not your husband and, or your wife. And then when you have these moments, if you're not taught well, you will mistake in yourself thinking that you married the wrong person. Oh, come on. The truth is that you are compatible but with more than one person. And there are right people that you can marry. Are there wrong people that you can marry? Yes. Someone say, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There are some wrong people out there and you gotta be careful because the wrong people appear to be the right people in the beginning. They'll know how to talk to you. And sometimes you're going, oh my God, he's so right. No, his representative is so right. Get to know them a bit later. See if they have commitment through the thick and the thin. See if they're consistent when it's good and it's bad. Because yeah. a lot of people walk out the moment that there's friction. A lot of people walk out of a relationship the moment there's one problem. A lot of people walk out the moment that there's something that they did, don't understand in the person. Mm. And, 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 and that's because there's a lack of commitment. One more, more on that in a bit. There are wrong people. There is no perfect person. Mm. But there is right 
people, not a right person. The myth has to do with that once you meet the right person, you think that everything's gonna be all right. The myth is, I can play around, I can treat guys and I can treat girls the way that I want, I can do whatever I want, because when I meet the right person, everything's going to change. My past will all of a sudden disappear. <laughs> so sometimes we think that I can behave the way I want, I can have the habits that I want, I can sleep with him and then sleep with another guy later and then sleep with a third guy later and still go back to him. I can do all these things because it's all right. The moment I meet the right person, everything's going to be all right. We think that our past is going to disappear the moment that we meet the right person. We think that our bad habits are going to disappear the moment that we meet the right person. We think that our dirty language is going to disappear when we meet the right person. We think that our discipline is going to appear when we meet the right person. We think that integrity is all of a sudden going to pop when we meet the right person. We think that the porn issue is going to leave when we meet the right person. Nah, it's not like that at all. There's a delusion. You think that your problem is, I just haven't met the right person yet. Or, I met them, and I married them, and now things aren't all right anymore. And so you're slowly coming to the conclusion that you must have chosen the wrong right person. You're coming to that conclusion. And so now you're looking for the next right person. Because you think that the myth of the right person is a reality and it's completely untrue because this line of thinking, this line of thinking is what shapes our culture. I'm unhappy because I'm with the wrong person. So now I just need to go find the right person and then everything's going to be all right. It's the type of thinking that says, don't you find, when, once you find them, everything will be fine. Which married people go to. Good luck. <laughs> you know why a lot of people are not laughing? Because a lot of people are not married here. <laughs> that once you find the one that you're looking for, that fantasy, that Netflix series in your life that plays inside your head, that romantic novel that you're writing with your love story, or one day you will write vows to each other, poems and lyrics for some songs. That one person that you are fantasizing about, you're thinking, and our culture's thinking, that once we find them, everything's gonna be fine. And see, we look at this and we go, no, that's totally not true, but if you look at our lives and our decisions, we live this way. We literally make decisions like this. Yeah. We jump into relationships thinking that this one's going to be different. We yeah. jump into relationship thinking that this one's going to be fine. Yeah. We jump into relationship thinking, I'm going to be all right. And that once I find them, everything will be fine. That you're not going to be caught by porn after you find her. Mm. Or your insecurity is just going to go away if you're a girl. Or your bad habits are going to disappear all of the sudden like, that if I can just meet the right person, not only is everything going to be all right, but I'm going to be all right. Mm. It's a myth. Yeah. It's a myth. Yeah. That when you find the right person, that I'm going to be all right. It's a myth. The thing is that this myth makes great reality TV. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It makes a really great Netflix series. It makes great film. But it makes a miserable Reality. Yeah. Yeah. And so, myth number two, the promise myth. Baby, I promise. You know why you laughed at that? <laughs> Baby, I promise. The promise myth is a promise replaces the need for preparation. That we think that because we promise that it's all going to be all right. That you can promise your way into a healthy, satisfying relationship with a successful future. And everything that happened in the past before can be overcome by two things. A promise and a party. Your vows at a ceremony, a promise. And then a party at reception. Once we have these two elements, everything will go away, baby girl. Boo, everything's going to go. Like all my like, you know, attention things that I need, the attention of other males and not just yours, that's all going to go away with a promise and a party. 
It's a myth. But the thing is this, promises are never the substitute for preparation. A promise could never substitute your preparation. Can you say my preparation? preparation. Your responsibility, your preparation. And we know this in every arena of life except guess where? Relationships. Like we know that you can't promise your way academically into a career. We know that you can't have, you, we know that you can't promise yourself into a great business. We know that you can't promise yourself into sports. Can you imagine all the, can you imagine an entire team in the locker room promising each other that they're going to win? Like, can you picture the Canucks being in the locker room with their coach going, we're going to promise each other that we're going to win. We don't need to practice though. It's ridiculous. No hockey team would substitute promises for practices. And every coach knows you don't promise to win games, you prepare to win. And the big question is this, the big question is this, who's preparing us for relationships? Netflix is. Instagram is preparing us. And the thing with Instagram and the thing with Netflix is this, that the two characters of the movie, it takes them about an hour and 45 minutes to find out that they really love each other. Yeah. We already know this. We already know this. We already know that they're going to fall in love. And then they get married and they live happily ever after. No one talks after the wedding day. No one's showing you the true reality of what a relationship really is after the happily ever after. And this is why our generation is so, like, it makes great film. To have the guy pursue the girl and sometimes you place yourself in the character's place and you imagine the girl that you like and you're just fantasizing so much. Mm. And it's okay to dream. I encourage you to keep dreaming. But you got to prepare, bro. Yes. Yeah. Like, what do you have to offer? Yeah. You have to offer something to the person that you're going to give your life to. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it is. Because a lot of guys really want to have the girl and they want to date the girl, but they have nothing to offer her. And if you go, well, I have a job, and I have a career, and I have money, and I have my own apartment. Good, that's very, very good. But last time I checked, money and apartments don't keep a marriage strong. That's Character right. does. <laughs> Character. The ability to be someone that can communicate in healthy confrontation when something's going wrong. Because imagine if we got married, right? And we handled our marriage life the way that we sometimes handle everything else in life. Mm -hmm. At the moment there's friction, you walk away. Mm -hmm. Are are we going to be a generation that walks away from our children? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be a generation that walks away from our husband, our wife, just because it didn't go right? See, you can have a house, you can have a career, and that's amazing. And some of you need to get a house and you need to get a career. (laughs) Meaning you need to go to school, do something, get the license, bro. I always say this in every relationship thing. You can't take your wife when her water breaks on TransLink. You can't be like, all right, hop on, babe. That can't be you because, see, preparation's important, including your license. And so some of you need to catch that and you need to start there. But for those of you that have that, it's amazing. But I'm going to tell you something. It's the inside. It's the mindset. How do you deal with confrontation? Mm. Can you even have confrontation? Or, or you, you just fly? Mm. When, when, when you get offended, what do you, what do you act like? Can you listen or do you have to explode? Mm. Do you have wisdom in handling your finances? Because if you do, but she doesn't, and she just wants to go shopping all the time, to Sephora, and she wants the Kylie Jenner lipstick, uh. the new shade that came out, uh. and that's all she does, there's going to be problems. Or if your husband only likes video games, oh. <laughs> and that's all he invests on. See, you can have the house, you can have all these things, but if you don't have the character, this is where the conflict between marriages happens that allows the marriages to get shattered. Yeah. And it's a lack of preparation because you don't promise to win, you gotta prepare to win. Yeah. And the big question is this, are you going to keep allowing Netflix and Instagram to teach you about relationships. Mm. That everything's gonna be all right when you find the right person. 
That makes great movies. That makes a great fairy tale. But that's not going to make a great reality for your life. And I know that some of you that are in a relationship that you're listening to this, you're going, no, 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 but you don't know him like I do, girl. Uh, come on, come on, come on, preach it. Or, or the common one that we hear, but, but this one is different. <laughs> How many times have we heard that one, right? And, and, and if you're an older person with a little bit more experience, you've maybe had a relationship, like a, a real relationship or two, when you hear young people saying that, you're like. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can't even correct that because you're just like, ah, there's no point in correcting this. They're just going to get angry. And you, yeah. the Bible says you can't correct people that just don't want to be corrected. Just let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like, I'll let you learn. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Take luck with you. And the whole idea of commitment isn't even being mentioned anymore. We've forgotten covenant. Mm. Covenant is what we speak about at the front when we're getting married. Mm -hmm. What are the vows like? In sickness and in? Health. In richness or in? Poor. Rich or? Poor. Good or? Bad. Thick or? Thin. Thick or thin, baby? <laughs> God have mercy on me. <laughs> We've forgotten covenant. <laughs> We've forgotten covenant. And we've become contract. In other words, one wrong moment, sorry, babe. See you later, boo. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> Think about it. How many marriages break? How many marriages in divorce? See, it's this whole walking away um, problem. Because you've walked away from every single problem in your life. You became contractual and not covenantal. Covenantal says, covenant means Bay through thick and thin. Yeah. I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to fight with you, and I'm going to fight for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whether you're healthy or you're in sickness, yeah. I'm going to stick by your side. That is my covenant to you. Amen. Whether if you look fine or you don't look fine, I'm going to stick with you. Yeah. Whether if you're popular or unpopular, whether if it's thick or thin, I'm gonna stick with you. Whether people love you or dislike you, I'm gonna stick with you. It's, it's good or bad. I'm making a covenant, and my covenant, my choice to fight with you, stands regardless of what happens around you. Because I'm covenantal, I'm giving you my life, I'm giving you a part of who I am. We ride till we... Yeah. yeah. Now, contract says, I'll stick with you mm. until the good stuff runs out. Mm. I'll be by your side as long as you make me happy. Mm. I'll be by your side as long as you never challenge me. Mm. I'll be by your side as long as you look that good. Mm. <laughs> Now, you're looking at me funny, but that's how a lot of guys think. Yeah. And if you're real, you're going to be like, yeah, that's true. I never said all guys. I said a lot of guys. So please don't be like, I'm not like that. I never said you. <laughs> <laughs> we become covenant and we lost it and then we became contract. Let me put it to you this way. An I do does not mean I can. And a lot of us have this mindset that you think that the moment you say, I do, at your wedding, it automatically qualifies you as someone that can. Saying I do does not make you capable. Saying I do makes you accountable. And here's the reality. When you're accountable, but not capable, 
you'll be miserable. When you are accountable because you said I do, but then you're not capable for a lack of preparation. This brings misery in the marriage. And what's the purpose of dating? It's to eventually lead to a bond that is covenantal, where you can share your life. Your heart becomes their heart. Their heart becomes yours. You become one flesh. You open the space for a family to be birthed and you have children. Your lives become integrated. But the problem is that if you don't prepare, you will not be capable to be accountable. And this leads to you being miserable and your spouse being miserable. Real talk, isn't it? Yeah. Now, a lot of married people that have gone through this, you're saying amen with everything you've got inside your soul. Because you've got to say quietly because your husband or your wife's right beside you. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying is so true. And so here's a very deep theological and very philosophical statement that I want to make. It's a point that I want to help you, okay? If you're not preparing, if you're not preparing, I hope that this helps you tremendously. If you're not preparing, you won't be prepared. Mm. Just like that. Just like that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you're not preparing now, man, Oh, wake up call is going to happen. It's going to be too late. But pastor, I'm 14. Prepare now. I mean, get a head start. Guy, play it right, guy. Play it right. If you're a girl, you're 16. You're 14. Play it right. If you're in your 20s, move. (laughs) Move. (laughs) If you're in your 20s, move. Start preparing your heart. Guys. Prepare the eyes. Because <laughs> if you don't prepare, you will be accountable, not capable, and you'll end up being. Yeah. I thought you'd help me. You'll be. So if you aren't preparing, you won't be prepared. And here's the main point that I want to make. This is where following Jesus comes into play. Because when you follow Jesus, watch this, you become the kind of person, the person that you're looking for is looking for. When you follow Jesus, Jesus makes you better at life. Yes, he does. Jesus teaches you. Someone should have clapped right there. I thank that brother because he's like, yes, that's right. That's right. Jesus, this is where this whole thing And this is just the introduction. Are you liking it so far? We're going to get deep throughout the next five weeks. This is where the principle of following Jesus really comes into play because Jesus makes you better at life. Yes, he does. And he shapes you. You need to become the kind of person, the person that you're looking for is looking for. Become. Mm. No one talks about becoming. Everybody talks about finding. But the success to marriage is actually you becoming. The person that you're looking for is. Oh, come on. Is. Yeah. There was this young girl, grew up in church, believed in Jesus, had a good time in church, served in church, and then she went to, to, to college. When she went to college, she decided to put her faith on a pause and she went on a hiatus and just started living life the way that she wanted to live life the same way that all her college people were living life and uh she decided to put a pause to her jesus believing stuff still went to church but decided not to get plugged in decided to just put a pause on jesus decided not to have a chair time decided not to pursue god and she went through some rough relationships and um when she went through the rough relationships those rough relationships kind of brought her back to God because she went through some painful moments inside her heart. And she's like, oh shoot, you know what? I really need God. And so she went back to God. And uh, when she went back to God, she started getting involved with the young adults in the church. And then one day there was this city group party. City groups is what we have here at Crave Church so that we can meet people and interact with people and engage with people and grow together in a small group. Um, So you should sign up to one after this downstairs. 
Um, well, anyways, they had a city group format type of thing in their church, and she got signed up for a city group or a small group or a Bible study thing, whatever you want to call it. And she met this guy there, and this guy had it all. He had the looks, he had the biceps, he had the car, he had the job and the career, and this guy knew the Lord. And she's like, oh my God, right? And then this girl tells a story that she went home and she starts getting infatuated with the idea of marrying this guy because this guy was so, so right for her. And one day her mom was ironing her clothes, a shirt, and they were getting ready to go to church, and she decides to tell her mom, Mom, guess what? I met this guy at the city group party the other night, and he's got the job, he's got the finances, he has a great relationship with God, he's got the car, and he's got the house. This guy is so, so, so on point. I can't stop thinking about a life with, a, with this guy. And her mom, this is what the girl says, puts her iron on the table and says, but sweetie, a guy like that is not looking for a girl like you. Wow. Ouch. Now, let me tell you something. This was the defining turning moment where this girl realized the wrong approach to relationships is, I'm going to find someone. She realized that the wrong approach to a good relationship, a healthy relationship is, I'm going to go find somebody. Like a lot of you, got your binoculars out, I'm finding, <laughs> looking. And you're hoping to find the next right person because you've gotten in to relationships with the wrong right person before. And you're searching, and your point of view is, I'm going to find someone. But in this girl's mind, it had never crossed that I need to become someone. That's the contrast. That's the purpose of this talk. That maybe we need to have an, a, a, a switch in our perspective. Uh, the perspective that I want us to take is, I need to become someone. Say it to your neighbor, I need to become someone. And don't worry, married people, I got you. I'm coming for you. Like Pastor Mike Todd says, I'm coming to your house. When you follow Jesus, you become. Jesus was hanging with his homeboys, the disciples, his crew, his squad, his gang, whatever synonym you prefer. And then he starts talking to them about relationships. Can you say relationships on three? One, two, three. He starts talking to them about relationships. Does this thing turn on? Yeah. You know why? It's because I'm being the light of Jesus right now. <laughs> He's talking to his squad about relationships. Can you see relationships? relationships? And then he tells them everything we need to know about relationships. He has this sit down moment, kind of like the one that we're having right now where I'm, I get to sit down with you and we're talking about relationships. And then he gives them this one key principle that can change and alter every single marriage, every single relationship, every single family, every single thing that has to do with relationships, including your boss, your coworkers, your children, your school teachers, your students, everybody beneath you and everybody around you and everybody above you. He gives them this powerful, powerful principle. Are you ready for the principle? Yes. He says this, this is my command. Meant. <laughs> the disciples were staring at him just like you're staring at me. What was the commandment? You ready for it? Yes. This can alter everything. This changes everything, believe it or not. And I'm going to explain it. And you're going to be like, wow. So he's hanging out with them. He says, if you follow me, I'll let you become. Because my words are words of life. My words transcend human wisdom. They're eternal wisdom. My words, my words are life. My word is an anchor to your soul. And he says, this is my commandment. Are you ready? Yeah. Love each other. 
To which we go, yeah, 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 okay. I mean, that was great buildup, but what the heck? And Jesus says, no, 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 I'm not done yet. This is my commandment, love each other. In the same way, I have loved you. Now that changes the game. In the same way, I have loved you. And a few days after Jesus made this statement to his disciples, Jesus put on a demonstration of love that took his disciples' breath away because it took Jesus' breath away. Meaning, Jesus demonstrated that statement by dying on a cross for them even though they didn't deserve him to. And this is why Jesus changes everything. Now, how many of us in this room love gossip when it's about someone else? We are a generation and a people, and not just our generation, but we are people that love gossip when it's about somebody else. Now, how many of you love gossip when it's about you? You hate it, don't you? You hate it, don't you? Say yes. I mean, if you love it, you're a masochist, and that's weird. We all love gossip when it's about somebody else, but we all hate gossip when it's about us. This is why you got to be careful how you speak about other people, because there's a prophet called Justin Timberlake, and he says, what goes around comes back around. <laughs> so we all love gossip. That's why we read gossip columns. We don't call it gossip. Um, we call it content. <laughs> or in the spiritual world, for the Christians, we call it discernment. Uh. Girl, we got to pray. Yeah. But let me spill the tea first. <clears throat> We all love gossip when it's about somebody else. <laughs> Some of you are dying back there. <laughs> we all love gossip when it's about somebody else. We don't like it when it's about us. Can I tell you something crazy? God has to face gossip about him all the time. And this is why for some of you, it's so hard for you to come worship a God because you've been told gossip misled information, misinterpreted information about him. And so because you believe the wrong thing about God, you have the wrong view about God and you can't get close. And the wrong view is that God is angry with you. That God hates it when you make a mistake. That God wants perfection. And the truth is, like the song says, if God sought perfection, if he was looking for perfection, we would die trying to reach it. Because you will never be perfect. And some of you view God as a punisher or as a being that is standing in his throne, standing, not sitting, standing with a lightning bolt ready to hurt you anytime that you make a mistake. That is so wrong. That's not right. And the reason why you think that way or feel that way towards God is because someone gossiped to you about him. And the information was twisted. Can you say, don't get it twisted? Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Get it twisted. Someone shared their experience with God through another church maybe, and they passed that information to you. And now you're going, now, I can't deal with a God like that. I'd rather just not believe in God. Mm. And so you run away from God. And the problem with this is that if you don't understand the truth, the truth is this. In Romans chapter 5, or chapter 8, I can't recall, one of my favorite, favorite passages of the Bible is spoken. And this is written by a guy called Paul. And Paul was a real historical figure that theologians, philosophers, and archaeologists do not deny. They know this man existed. He's real. He was part of history. As a matter of fact, Paul was so real, he influenced the majority of the Western world, which is the one that we live in. A lot of culture is influenced by his writings. And in one of his writings to a church in a place called Rome, he writes this. We're so blessed because while I was still a sinner, Christ chose and decided to die for me Amen. anyway. 
Romans chapter 5, verse 8. See, that's so potent. That goes so deep. Paul used to kill people that followed Jesus. Paul used to hurt the church. Paul would be the type of guy that would walk into this building with a SWAT team and put us all in prison and in handcuffs and say, deny Jesus Christ or we'll kill you right here, right now. And you would have to choose to deny Christ or die for Christ. That was Paul. And Paul is saying, while I was killing Christians, people who followed Jesus, Christ chose to die for me anyway. That's grace. That's the power of the gospel. That you don't have to earn your seat at the table. God sets the table for you. God is so good. So merciful. So powerful. So different. He's out of this world and this is why I thank him. This is why I worship him. This is why I love him. This is why I serve him. I don't serve him because of any other reason other than I don't deserve to have his grace. His grace. And what is grace? Grace is when someone extends to you what you don't deserve and we've all craved grace because anytime you've done something that has hurt somebody you love and you get caught you're on a car ride home going i hope they can forgive me yeah i hope they can let it i hope i don't get in you know it see you know the sentences really well you practice them (laughs) on a daily What are you hoping for? What you're hoping for is for someone to extend to you what you do not deserve. This is called grace. And I wanna clarify, because every gossip needs clarification. Mm -hmm. What is gossip? Gossip is when you hear one side of the story but you don't bother to hear the rest and you make up your decision. That is so foolish. And this will happen to you. We have to learn how to deal with healthy confrontation. Mm -hmm. Because this is a huge, huge principle that will save you much pain in your relationships. So I'm here to clarify, as an ambassador of Christ, God doesn't want you to be perfect. God doesn't need you to be perfect. God is not angry at you. I hope you hear me from the bottom of my spirit. God is not angry with you. God has also not given up on you. God is with you, and in His eyes, you are great because you were created in His image. That's right doesn't matter who you are or what you've done you are great in his eyes because you carry his image do not for a moment amen I would yes good the type of love God gives us is grace is the type of love that doesn't give up on somebody is the type of love where the mind isn't changed over something stupid Imagine if God loved like you. Yeah. Where would you be today? Dead. Michelle said, dead. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is the kind of love that God wants us to extend to others. Amen. Listen to Amen. this. This is how this gets wrapped up. This is the type of love where we lay down our lives, our rights for one another, and we put the other person first. It's the type of love where we forgive one another. Now listen to this next part. If you can pay attention to something, this is the part I want you to pay attention to. Wouldn't you wish your dad forgave your mom more? Wouldn't you wish your mom could have placed your dad first, maybe a little more? Do you see? Yeah. This type of love that God gives is called grace. And this is why Jesus was teaching his disciples about relationships. And he's saying, let me teach you one and only one principle. And if you get this one principle, you can do whatever the heck you want. Literally, if you get this one principle down, you can do whatever you please. Mm. This is my commandment. Love each other. In the same way I have loved you. To be forgiving, understanding, 
gracious, you put the other person first, and you extend to people what they do not deserve out of love. If our relationships could carry what Jesus taught, we can have a healthy, healthy city. That's right. Come on. That's right. Amen. Yes. So here's a reflection. Here's a reflection. The truth is the majority, the majority are definitely infatuated with the idea of finding someone that we can have a relationship with. This is the truth. The majority of us are infatuated with finding someone that we can call bae or boo or baby, whatever. But here's the question, or here's a question. Are you the person, the person you're looking for is looking for? Are you that person? If you want a fit person, you gotta be fit. You want a faithful person? You gotta be faithful. Not just externally, with your eyes, bro. You want your man to only pay attention to you? Well, you got to learn to only pay attention to him. Are you the person? The person you're looking for is looking for. Are you that person? Because if all you're doing is trying to find and not become, you're just repeating the same problems that our generations have faced, that your parents had to face. And if you're married, here's your question. Are you still the person they were looking for? So good. Are you still that person? Because as we keep on going, as we keep on marching in this series, you'll realize that marriage is not easy. It's harder than being single. So are you still the person that they were looking for? Or have you allowed the kids, the money, the business, or the busyness to get in the way of who you were becoming for your spouse? These are very, very, very reflective questions that really make us think. And here's my conclusion. And so before you answer these questions, because I know that when it comes to relationships and considering if we're ready or not, Gina, come up, please. When it comes to considering if we're ready to enter a relationship or not, we become experts at giving ourselves the benefit of the doubt. And we say, yes, I've become pastor. Let's wait a little more and join me in chapter two as we dive a bit deeper in defining what it really takes by letting the word of God be a mirror to your soul so that you can answer the question truthfully. My desire and my purpose for our relationship series at Crave Church is to have healthier relationships Amen. that lead to healthier marriages, which leads to healthier families, which ultimately leads to a healthier generation. Hey, thank you so much for listening. I hope that blessed you. And if you would ever want to partner financially with us, you can do so by going to www.cravechurch.org or the link will be in the description box. Share the message, spread the love, and I'll see you again next time.